If you're looking to get gardening quickly and in a small space, then container gardening is for you. In last week's video, I took you through a quick start guide to container gardening, and so introduced lots of different types of containers and also ways to fill them and grow in them. But it could be that you can't find containers right now. And a lot of people are in your shoes. It's very difficult to get a hold of some things, especially under lockdown. So fortunately, you can actually grow edibles in a lot of recycled materials. So whether they are the bags that compost comes in, they could be feed boxes like this, wine crates, milk crates, all kinds of things. If it's food grade and it has drainage in it, you can probably grow food in it. Now, one of my favorite materials to use for planters and containers is actually pallet wood. And I just so happen to have one here at home. And so today, what I'm going to show you is how to convert a wooden pallet like this into a medium-sized planter that you can go grow practically anything in. I've been busy back here on the patio with the container garden since last week and you'll notice some additions out here also plenty of seeds starting to sprout and i have that vertical planter planted with some lettuces now and i also bought a veggie pod which is this large planter here and that just went in yesterday and so the idea with this is that it actually reduces watering but it basically makes really good use out of patio space and turns it into a, a vegetable garden and a friend of mine has one of these so I thought I'd give it a go and then I've got my other vertical planter there and then just one last space here and that is where today's pallet planter is going to go. Right now we're back with the pallets. This is one that we've had here at the house for almost a year and Josh, my boyfriend, ordered some stuff for work and it arrived on this. And you can see I've used it for some paint swatches in the meantime and it's just been hanging out here. Now, if you are under lockdown, please don't go around looking for pallets. You don't need it that desperately. You can use other recycled materials. Save this idea for later. But if you do have some pallets, this is a great project for right now. This pallet is really ideal for a planter like the one I have in mind because the gaps in between the planks are really narrow. But if you have a pallet with larger gaps in between the planks, don't worry about it. You can line the inside or you can plant right through those gaps as I show you in the strawberry pallet planter. Another really important thing about pallets is pallet safety. These things were not created for DIY projects. They were created for transporting goods across international borders. And so they have to take measures to keep pests down and to avoid bringing insects and pathogens from one country to the next. So these are either heat treated or they're treated with a chemical called methyl bromide and that, that's an insecticide. You want to avoid using insecticides in gardening projects for obvious reasons, and you definitely shouldn't have it in the home either. So have a look around any pallet that you come across for any stamps, and there's gonna be a lot of different numbers and letters all over, but the thing that you're looking for is either HT or MB. If you see MB, it means methyl bromide. Avoid those pallets at all cost. But if it says HT, it means heat treated. So it's just been treated with heat to kill off insects and, and insect eggs. You'll need a few tools and pieces of equipment for this project. And that includes some heavy duty gloves and some eye protection. You're going to need something that is going to cut the pallet, so you could use a jigsaw or handsaw and today I'm going to use my steel GTA 26 and after that I'll be using a hammer and a splitting wedge and then putting it all together an electric screwdriver with a drill to make pilot holes and some screws that I had lying around here and then to line the planter I've got some landscaping fabric and a pair of scissors. Mm -hmm. 
Whenever you are working with power tools, especially ones that are cutting through wood, you want to wear eye protection and also protection for your hands and wear long sleeves, keep your hair back, all of that. These monstrous gloves are Josh's because my heavy duty gloves are actually at the allotment. So hi, <laughs> a bit funny. So this is a relatively new tool for me and it is Steel's GTA 26 and it's marketed as a pruner, so cutting through shrubbery, but you can also use it on pallets is what I've to been told. So let's see how it does. You've got to keep both hands on the tool turn it on and then slice this pallet into three different pieces and so it's nine planks here so three three and three here we go Pallet is still connected on the back side, so what we need to do next is flip this over and make some more cuts. The cuts we're going to make now are going to be in the exact same places as the first cut, so you can use those as a reference. You don't have to measure, it doesn't have to be perfect, just kind of eyeball it and make those same cuts. I've made all the cuts now and there are six cuts per side. So two here, two in the middle, two on the far side and the same on the reverse. And this tool has been pretty good for the job actually. And it's gone through the planks, no problem. And I could see it being really handy in a kind of an offsite kind of situation like at an allotment or someplace that doesn't have power because it is battery powered. Right, the next step. Let's pull these three parts aside. So we've got three parts now. And if you're starting to visualize this in your mind, we've got a bottom and two sides now. What we're going to try to do now is to remove all of these extra planks off the back. They're just going to be in the way when you make the planter and more importantly you can use them to build the last two sides. The middle ones are relatively easy. I say that, watch this will be difficult. <laughs> These are relatively easy to get off and you basically just wiggle these parts. See? Just put them aside. There's some rusty nails coming out of that so be careful. Same thing here. And then the last one here. With that third one now removed, I'm going to need to use a hammer to push back the nails. So hammer them down. And you won't see them in the final product, don't worry, but they are necessary because they're holding the entire piece together. The next part is a little bit trickier and we're gonna to try to get these smaller planks off either side and sometimes they'll come off by wiggling but more often than not you'll need to use a hammer so the claws of a hammer to pull them up gently without splitting them they're coming up easier than I thought the nails came up with most of them but there's still some here so I'm just gonna hammer them in In the strawberry pallet planter, I left these planks in, but you can take them out as well. And it actually makes it a little bit easier to fill the planter and you have extra wood to work with. So I'm gonna get my GTA 26 again and cut these off. We're gonna fit it together now, but the first thing we do before we start screwing two pieces together are putting in some pilot holes. And a lot of people make this mistake when they're screwing 
pieces of wood together and it can split the wood if you don't make little holes first. So this is an electric screwdriver and I've just taken the screwdriver bit off and put in a small drill and I'm just going to make four holes. So one on, on either end of this middle piece and it's going to be from the outer side inwards. And I should get some eye protection on for this too. Hold on. When you're making pilot holes, you don't need to go all the way through the wood. You just need to go a little ways through. So say about a centimeter, half an inch, just enough to get the screw started. With those pilot holes made, I've put the screwdriver bit back on the drill. And I also have a bunch of screws at hand and these are decking screws so they're suitable for outdoor use. So we'll put this aside. And then this is a little bit of a tricky part. If you have a flat surface or a workbench, even better. But if it's just your back garden like mine, it's perfectly fine. So we've got to balance the bottom piece on top. And then we're just going to screw those screws down into those pilot holes to hold it together. Now you can see what the container is going to look like. The next step is all about building up the sides. And you should have plenty of wood left over to complete this part of the project, but you may have to cut down some wood to fit in those spaces for those planks because some of these pieces, for example, these ones, they're a bit short. Now these ones here on the blocks, it is possible to get them off by using a wedge like that and a hammer, but it is hard work. And as you can see, it sometimes results in the plank splitting. The basic container is now finished and I was able to knock one of these blocks off one of the pieces of wood with a hammer and you can see it over there so that worked but then I also thought why don't I just screw one of these pieces in and I think that that's just fine as long as it fits snugly and it's a bit lower down it should be fine come here then come have a look <laughs> what do you think well I am really really pleased didn't take too long. I used a pallet I already had here at home. They say that necessity is the mother of invention and in this case it came true yet again. So I filled it with a mixture of compost and rotted horse manure or farmyard manure and it came out to about 175 liters so it was about three to four bags and it's lined with landscaping fabric, although you can use the plastic from your compost bags to line it as well, or another heavy duty outdoor material. And that's just to keep the compost inside. It is water permeable, so you'll be able to have drainage in your container, but it just reduces the, the mess. And you can see a little bit is popping out here. And if that fabric wasn't there, that would be compost running out. Now I'm going to water this in and then tomorrow I'm going to start planting it up and making use out of this dead space here on the patio. And if you have any questions about building this, leave them down in a comment below this video and I'll get back to you on those. I also have loads of other ideas on using pallets for the home and the garden. So they're both here on my YouTube channel but over on my website as well. That's lovelygreens.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this idea. And this is very similar to my strawberry palette planter video. So if you would like to see how that works, where you can actually grow strawberries through the slats, go over and have a watch of that. It's, it's one of my older videos. It's about six years old or maybe older than that. So be gentle with the comments. And I will see you next week for another video here on Lovely Greens. Bye for now.